Will you welcome our dearest friend, our guest this morning, Pastor Jim LaFoon, as he comes. Well, all right, can we give God one last great thunderous clap? All I can say, I'm there at King's Cathedral in Maui, and I feel so bad for everyone that had to miss that. That may be the most beautiful thing I've seen on that. Can we give them one more great hand? tired. I've been standing plenty in call-out rooms, and um, I'm just so honored to be here. I want to speak to you very prophetically this morning. Before we do, I want to pray over Pastor Andrew and um, his wife. If you could please come up here. Josh and Shannon, could you join them up here, please? Son, my hands on you. I've given you real, real wide shoulders. Uh, You're naturally a very strong man. But it's spiritual strength that's lifted this thing. You're faithful. You've been here for the long haul. Um, it's not like you haven't lacked other opportunities. You've got quite a business head for that matter, son. Um, there's an entrepreneurial side. And I'm going to bless this house. I'm here to tell you, I'm going to use this word on purpose. I'll define it later. Uh, there's going to be a squall of the Holy Spirit. Mm. A st- intense revival storm is coming your way. It's going to hop from house to house all over Honolulu. And there's going to be an intense period of rain and the thunder of my voice. Um, You love people. You're very pastoral. As your wife knows, you're very driven as well. Um, Work comes very easy for you. But there's going to be a special grace on your sleep and your rest. You've been pretty tired of late. You even wake up tired. And um, you're you're, you're very strong. You love people. You're vision-driven. A fresh anointing is going to come on your word. You grew up very, very fast. You've been, th- not speaking of here, but you've been through some church quakes as well. You've seen things shake around you. But I've built a house that's unshakable in this place. Mm-hmm. It's going to grow. You're not to be afraid. You will find you're coming into a year to 14 months of a steady stream of men and women and young people coming to this house. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you wisdom. A fresh spirit of evangelism is going to come on this house. And I'm going to begin to raise up an extraordinary young evangelist in your midst. And signs and wonders will follow. And I will bless him. You married the right woman. I mean, she, she's very stable. She presses along. You feel like everything is going to blow up. She feels like, don't worry, it's going to blow down. But I want you to know a powerful gift of tongues and interpretation is going to come on you. You're going to find yourself praying in tongues. And then you're going to interpret it with words of life and revelation. In fact, I'm going to speak to you more and more. You're a very deep woman, nothing shallow about you. And a series of prophetic dreams are going to come to you. At night, my spirit's going to light you up. I want you to keep a journal by your bed because you're going to find yourself waking up. It's not insomnia, it's Holy Ghostia. And, um, and, I want, and I'm going to speak to you and use you. You're very, put your hand on your heart for me, Shannon. You're a very, very wise woman. Trauma healing gifts going to come to you. You're going to feel the power of the Holy Spirit moving out of you. You've had lots of spiritual warfare of late. You've, both of you felt like some of our minds just get locked up. And there have been clouds over you. I want you to know that's a good sign. The enemy is afraid, says the Lord. You feel like, man, there's been a heaviness over my head. I don't know why. You felt the same thing. And if there's no reason for it. Yes, you're tired, but you're busy. It's not that. There's been a demonic heaviness that's tried to come. Um, and and, you, and you've, you've carried a lot of things in your extended family as well. I mean, you're, you're kind of the burden bearer of the extended family. Do you have siblings, by the way? How many? You have boys, girls? Names, ages? Okay. Is it, are either of them here? I'm going to touch your sister by my spirit. Fresh oil is coming to her. There's been some bleeding. You've not known what to do. She's precious to you. You love her so much. And I'm getting ready to touch her by the power of my spirit. I'm going to refresh her. She's been limping along for 14 to 18 months now. There's been a second relational wound that's pierced her heart. And I'm reaching down to touch her. 
fear not. I'm going to pray for your kids later, but remind me about kids again real quick. Um, Starting with the oldest, name and age. Six. Amelia, your girl. Okay. Yeah. Levi is four. And Zoe is ten months. I felt something about a second daughter. Hand of the Lord I'm going to be on Zoe. There's something miraculous about that girl. Like it was an interesting labor, interesting delivery, kind of surprising. But a strong mantle is going to be upon her. Already she's very deep, responds to music, very unusual baby, different than the first two. A strong prophetic mantle will be on her. And from her earliest age, by four and five, she'll have words of knowledge. My spirit will come to her. She will be a joy to raise. She'll be an incredible touch on your family. She'll be very unique. Well done. My hand is on you. Let's just give them a hand. I know in many ways, it's a frightening time right now. War in Europe, economic things, your own state struck by disaster. Where in the world are we? What is God saying? Help us, Holy Spirit. I'm going to entitle this message, Visited. Here's a term used throughout scripture, visit, visitation, talks about it in Genesis, goes all the way through the ministry of Jesus. It defines a time when God draws unusually close to people, places, cities, churches, and cultures. I want to help you recognize where we are today, and I want to help you respond to the Holy Spirit's visitation. I want to tell you why that's important, why it's so important that you understand this moment. You know, Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. And I realize in Christ, we who were far away have been brought near. And I realize because of Jesus, there's no, there's no time you can not reach out to your Heavenly Father. But there are unusual times when God draws near or allows us to experience that nearness. It's easier to find Him, easier for the miraculous. We've come into such a time as this. I'm going to give you a scripture, and I'll be prophetic just a moment about where I see us in the world and what's happening in those things. And I'll, 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 then I'll talk a bit about the Hawaiian Islands, Maui here, and then I'll take you practically through this message. The Bible refers to these periods of time as times of refreshing. In fact, in Acts 3, 19 through 20, Peter's preaching, it's after Pentecost by now, there's a talk about fast growth. There's a church of 5,000 the first day. He says, repent, therefore, and turn back from your sins, although he blotted out, and that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Christ appointed for you. Now, I know the Bible talks about we're in the last days. All I can say is they're some of the longest days I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, if somebody even says we're in the final hour, and I think, dear Lord, I mean, the heaven clock different. We've been waiting around a couple thousand years now. But in that period of time, there have been unique times where from the presence of God, he pours himself out on the earth. Why would I say to you that we're in such a time as this? Why would I feel that? Well, you can observe it more now, but let me just be prophetic just for a second. I, I can remember back at the end of 2018, December 31st, when I saw this terrible shaking coming on America. I stood in my congregation and I said, um, in 17 months, we're going to come to a time of terrible shaking. Things are going to be shaken. We're going to be polarized. Ethnic pain is going to come. Mr. Floyd was killed tragically in Minneapolis 17 months after that. Lord had spoken to me 
that in 17 months you'll be halfway done with something. I wouldn't see COVID for a few more months. I just saw a river of death come out of China. I didn't know what it was. But as we hit that 17-month period, I was, okay, we're halfway done. God's up to something. And he had promised me that America wasn't going to end in anarchy. And we know how polarized our country is right now. Let's be honest. You say, Jim, are you partisan? Yes, about Jesus, and that's all. I do vote, but I have absolutely no hope of Washington saving our country. They can't even save themselves, let's be honest. And so, um, so as we pressed in to October 2021, I knew this 34-month period was ending, and thank God, COVID went from pandemic to endemic. And that's when I, I had a, a little glimpse of the Ukraine. All oh, this is going somewhere. I got on the phone with our Ukraine leaders, and she said, what's going to happen to my country? I said, well, Russia's going to invade you. You have a very rough 36 months coming. But you're not to be afraid. The Lion of Judah is greater than the bear, and he'll slap the bear away. Now, by the way, I've been to Russia, love with Russia, work with Russian churches. I'm not talking about the precious people of God there in Russia. So I've watched this Ukraine thing, and in January of uh, 2022, the Lord told me there's a, a great revival on the way to Eastern Europe. And the closer they are to Russia, the greater the revival will be, for the fear of Russia will drive them to me. And later in February, though, I sat and the Lord said, Jim, by the way, Ukraine's going to get invaded next week. And he said, but I don't want you to be afraid about it, because it'll be worse for them than Afghanistan. I'm going to break some things. My hand's going to be on this. Don't be afraid. I think this war is going to come to a head this year, by the way. I can feel it. But you're not to be afraid about that. You're not to be afraid when everyone's talking about nuclear weapons that we're going to be blown up. We're not. You're not to fear what the world fears. You're not. God has this. All this in the economy of God, he's moving. I'll never forget in, in December 5th of 2021, sitting with a friend of Josh's, Jacob Aranza, a great multi-site church. And the next thing I know... It was like I saw the church in a rocket ship. And he said, you're coming into a 36-month period of divine acceleration. Then at 36 months, I saw us pierced to a whole new place and the light of glory begin to flow over the earth. And I think we're accelerating right now. We're in the early days of God's spirit touching us, moving on us. You're not to be afraid. As I'll never forget June 9th, 2022. The Lord allowed me to hear Jesus praying and he was walking across our great country crying out one more time father one more time it was so dusty so dry his dad said it one more time son here it comes i saw the first great drop of rain begin to fall in america and create ecosystems of life and revival god's heard your prayers don't be afraid you watch what he does you know as i i, I was in august 24 2023 in birmingham alabama and i was just praying and crying out over world revival. Next thing I knew, the Lord took me to the UK. And uh, the UK, all the flags were half masked, people weeping, crying. No one knew the queen was sick at that time. And I thought, my gosh, what's died? And Jesus stepped out. He grabbed the lanyard of the Union Jack, pulled it down. It soared to the top of the mast. Snore, so just soar. Lightning crashed. I've not forgotten the promises of the UK. In fact, I'm going to open the historic wells of revival around the world. My glory is going to come. A week later, said, when the queen dies, revival is imminent. Fear not. We're in the beginning stages of the move of the Holy Spirit. The Hawaiian Islands are not going to be forgotten. I'll share, I'll share one more thing about America that I want to drop right down to these islands and talk. It's February 3rd. My favorite place to be, you'd think, well, your favorite place is probably restaurants. That's my second favorite place. My first favorite place is in front of my world map. One of my walls is a whole map of the world. And I sit feeling so privileged to watch over the world and pray. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, I'm going to give you a storm warning, son. He said, Storm, thunderstorms of revival are coming to your country. And I just saw these, these storm fronts begin to move through. 
these storm fronts began to move. I saw an intense period of rain in one of, in one of the churches I work with. We have just an, an astonishing meteorologist. He's also a prophet, which makes it really interesting. And he told me, he said, you know, Jim, when it comes to thunderstorms, we don't watch the cloud, we watch the ground. Because it's the conditions on the ground that determine how much it rains when you have a cloud. I'll never forget that. Of course, four or five days later, the Asbury revival broke out. And for 14, 15 days, and in my larger family, we have a church very close to this. We are deeply involved in that revival. I mean, this, that's kind of like a 3,000-person school, one stoplight, 6,000-person town. 70,000 people visited there. The final weekend, there were 20,000 people. The building's stark. It's ugly. Wooden pews. No beautiful sound system. But students were pulling their beds in to camp there. They wouldn't leave. The glory came. It fell for 14 or 15 days. People from 50 nations showed up. TikTok had a million hits. Asbury revival. Shook the world wide. It was a thunderstorm of the spirit. I'll never forget on my last visit, I was preaching for Pastor Reggie and Bomi, and they were out of town. Um, I can't remember. They were in Texas. I can't remember. And, um, man, I got in that first service, and the presence of God was so strong. And I looked up. And heaven opened. And it was like the biggest warehouse I've ever seen. Miles. And it was filled with what looked to me like swimming pools, some of them like miles wide. And I realized, and they were all on wheels and angels were pushing them. I said, what is it? That's my outpourings, Jim. For I'm bringing outpourings to churches across this country. And I saw different names. I got to Hawaii. I was here last week with a dear friend in Honolulu preaching. I woke up and I looked into the heavens. He said, son, throw away your old message. I said, what? I, I sent it to him. He said, I, yeah, I told you. I, you knew you should have sent it to him. I said, why? He said, there is, try to remember that word again. What was that word I used this morning? Huh? There's a squall of my spirit coming to this church. And a squall is a short, intense storm where there's snow or rain is dumped. This morning and last night, I looked. I saw that, I saw that vision again. And I saw what looked like a train. It was so strange. A train pulling swimming pools. And every one of them said, King's on it. So, Jim, I'm pouring out squalls of my spirit. I'm telling you, listen to me now. There's one coming here. I want to help prepare you for that this morning. I don't want you to miss the day of your visitation. Now, I believe we're early into this. I believe there'll be a deeper drenching. We're still in some of the earlier stages. But when I look around the world, it's amazing the stories I hear. Let me talk to you about this concept. It's clear in the scripture that God visits individuals. Genesis 21.1 he said, the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he promised. She was up in her 80s, Abraham 98. All hope was gone. Long beyond menopause. But Abraham had never lost hope. Even though he was 98 and it was in the heat of the day, when he looked out and faintly saw three beings in the desert, his spirit was so sensitive, he realized one was God. How sensitive is your spirit? Does God seem like a mirage to you? The old man ran as fast as you can run at 98, fell into the burning sand and said, don't pass me by. Never ask for a thing. And the Lord visited him. 
Sarah heard the words. She was pregnant shortly thereafter. You're never too old for a miracle. We know Hannah had a great husband, beloved, barren. Her rival provoked you. You know, God's into provocation, myself. He'll allow you to see another church or another situation or another person to get you to hunger. Finally, she couldn't take it anymore. She went into the temple and fell into deep intercession. The high priest is kind of kind of aged out of discernment, it seemed like. Thought she was drunk. Ah, hey, you drunk woman, get out of here. <laughs> How long would you stay in that church? You're in deep intercession. Josh says, hey, you drunkard, get out. <laughs> She goes, I'm not drunk. I'm in deep travail. The Lord's heard your prayer. And he visited her. He still visits people. Visits groups. In Exodus 431. Moses had been visited. He's 80 years old. Owned nothing. The sheep belong to his father-in-law. Some of you feel like I've just aged out of God using me. I've got nothing. He'd been the great prince of Israel, of Egypt. The son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now he's nothing but a convicted felon who had murdered in the eyes of Egypt and run. And he found a bush. The rest is history. Fell on his face. God visited him. So I'm going to visit my people Israel. I'm going to deliver them from 460 years of bondage. In Exodus 4.31, the people believed when they heard that the Lord had visited the people of Israel and he had seen their affliction, they worshiped. When God visits, nothing can stand against it. No demon can stand against it. Ruth 1.6, Naomi had lost everything. She was bitter. Husband dead, sons dead, living in Moab, little Ruth with her. And she looked at Ruth, she said, the Lord has visited Bethlehem. There's food there. The rest is history. God's visitation is a powerful thing. In Acts 15, 14, Peter's relating with some others what happened with the Gentiles. He says, my gosh, he said, and he's, and he's describing to them, this is how God first visited the Gentiles. I was in prayer. I saw this sheep thing and God told me to eat a bunch of things I didn't want to eat. I refused. He said, stop calling them unclean. Next thing I know, there was a Roman soldier at my door. They hated Roman soldiers. Hated Gentiles for that matter. But Jesus had tried to help them. I went with him. I didn't want to pray for them Gentiles. A lot of them was Roman soldiers. But I began to preach and they burst out in tongues. He visited them. In Luke 7, 16. It says of Israel, fear seized them all. And they glorified God, saying, a great prophet has risen among us. God's visited his people. How many of you ever felt an extraordinary presence of God? Raise your hand. How many of you felt it outside of church at home? Raise your hand. That's a bit of what it's like to be visited. God's so close to many of you right now. Where's the visitation in a church start? With you. Sometimes it starts in homes. What is our priority? Why is this so important? And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it. It's interesting, Jesus knows he's going to die, but he's not weeping over himself. Like, why would he weep over the city? And he said, this is Luke 19, 41 through 40. Would that you, even you, had known on this day what would have given you peace. But now it's hidden from your eyes. 
And the days will come when your enemies will barricade you, surround you on every side, tear you down, you and the children within. There will be one stone left. You missed your visitation. You say, well, Jim, how could I miss my visitation? Just ask the citizens of Bethlehem when a pregnant teenager rode in with the most important visitation in history. No one recognized a visitation in its infancy. No one recognized in Bethlehem. How many of you know there'd have been plenty of room in the inn if they'd have known it was the Son of God? Jesus grew up there. No one recognized him. Family kind of poor. He'd play in the straits. No one realized. God. The flesh. They'd had their prophecies. Everyone knew a great leader would come out of Bethlehem. Everyone knew the second David would come. They didn't know until it, it was too late. And the kings of the east showed up spilling gold onto the ground, crying, falling on their face in front of a little boy in a poor family. How they must have grown when they realized they could have babysat him. They could have held him, had him for dinner. Now his miracle power spread the land. You can be in the middle of of God visiting your church and not fully see it. You may, it's, it's kind of like when Paul, Jesus appeared to him and he fell to his face in a light. I mean, it was just talk about a visitation. He said, no one with him, everyone with him heard the sounds but didn't understand. I want to prepare you for what's coming this morning. I've been visited by the Lord on a number of occasions. There's nothing like it. When I lay dying of hepatitis after living in a war zone as a missionary, three-way war in the island of Mindanao, early 20s, I was dying, my liver was destroyed. I was delirious on my bed. The next thing I know, he visited me. It was like the whole ocean in a Maui surf wave. Golden glory poured down on me. I woke up healed. He'll visit you. There's nothing like it. I experienced my first large visitation. At 17, my senior year of high school. Maybe you've heard of the Jesus Revolution. There's a movie about it now. I grew up in out. I grew up about mm, 90, 100 minutes from there. Worked its way down to San Diego in 1971. And the wave of glory poured over my high school. There was no preaching. God visited. Being saved became the cool thing to do. Hundreds of us would worship at lunch, raising our hands and praising. It swept my school like a wave. How do you participate in this? What's it like? First Peter 2.12 is a very insightful verse. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable. Why is that? So that when they speak against you as evildoers. How many of you know we, we live in a day when people are speaking about the church as evildoers? The fact that we believe life starts at conception and believe in life. And yes, God forgives abortion, but that's, that's evil now. The fact that we love the biblical view of marriage, that's evil now. We're bigots now. God says, don't be afraid. Continue to live honorably that they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of your visitation. God's going to visit us. But it starts with the church. It starts with you. There's a profound verse in Revelation 3.20 that many people use 
to call lost people to be saved. And it's a fine application, but it's not the interpretation. This is to a church who is in deep need of a touch from Christ. Jesus, behold, I stand at the door and knock. You heard that? Or can you hear the Holy Spirit knocking right now? He's knocking to touch you. Knocking to fill you freshly with the Holy Spirit. Knocking to baptize you in the Spirit. Release the gifts of the Spirit. It's voice activated. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, can you hear him? Can you feel him? I've been a Christian almost 61 years now. I've preached 50 for sure. And he still stands at the door of my heart and knocks. And if you'll open that door, if you'll give me that time, if you'll open your life to me, I'm going to come in and eat with you and you with me. I'm going to fellowship with you. I'm going to touch you. I'm going to feed you. How's it happen? Why? If the Lord wanted to visit you outside of church, what would it be like? Like, what if he wanted to touch you other than Sunday morning, Sunday night? How would he get a hold of you? Like, if God wants to touch you, he said, well, of course he can, really. I mean, Moses, how long had Moses been walking by that burning bush? What's it like? All of you have felt God's presence. And many times, God knocks through the sense of his presence. My dear friend Jim Critcher calls it visceral impressions that come deep in our emotions. I could be in my office reading and all of a sudden, I'll feel the presence of God all of a sudden. That ever happened to you feel the presence of God? May I tell you there's always a reason for that? When I feel that I stop, what do you want? I'll put my favorite novel down. I'll stop looking at my Yankee game. I might, it's been very easy this year. They're so bad. I'll put it down. Typically, it's a sense of his presence. It's and when, he, when he's really persistent, you better stop because those moments will leave you. I've missed some. I've waited five minutes and not responded. Too busy in trivia. Presence comes. Maybe it's a little picture on the screen of your imagination. How many of you ever heard the soft whisper of God's voice? Most of you, why didn't he yell? He demands our focus. Many of us are only motivated by external things, not Elijah. Fire didn't do it, earthquake didn't do it, wind didn't do it, soft voice. You find when you just, maybe you feel his presence, just stop and raise your hands and say, okay. You may find yourself freshly filled with the Spirit. Maybe you've been deeply anxious and all of a sudden he shares his peace with you and it floods you and it flows into you. You ever have a neighbor just come to your mind? Maybe you should invite him to church. What do you think? Maybe you should pray for them. He's knocking at the door of hearts throughout this room. This is an hour of visitation. It's an hour when he's drawing close to us. Think with me for a moment of old Abraham. It's 98. 
been waiting decades. Sometimes God will seem like a mirage. Was it real? Is that really him? Did I really hear? How do you know you hear, Jim? My mom is 92. We talk all the time. I can recognize her voice. Same with God. The more you hear it, the better you get at recognizing it. What if I'm wrong? Well, if you're wrong, is it a waste to try to find him? No. Abraham ran out agenda free. Never said, where's my baby? When's my wife getting? No. Can you make a house call? The rest was history. Sarah was pregnant a year. Lot and his daughters were saved. He's drawn close to you. Oh, yes, he'll visit this, this king's. Make no mistake. Worship will get deeper and deeper. You won't want to go home. And you know why he's visiting you? He's also visiting your neighbors. He's drawing them, touching them, blessing them. Pastor Jordan, coming into a very unique time, visitation in your church. No one's going to want to quit worshiping. And you do manage things like that, by the way. A lot of times the Holy Spirit falls. We think we should just stop church and pray all the time. It's not true. But we do make room for the Holy Spirit. We find room for him. This visitation will have some very unique healings in your church, like you've not fully seen. Healing power will break out pockets of the church. You say today, I, want the, I need the fresh visitation of God. Raise your hand. If your hands are up. Stand to your feet right now. Join me. Stand to your feet. Say, Holy Spirit, visit me. Visit me. I'm desperate. Take a deep breath. Exhale slowly. And breathe in that presence. Say this, Jesus, I want to be freshly filled with the Spirit. I want to be freshly touched by your fire. Purify me right now. Touch our community. Touch Honolulu. By the way, don't fear for Maui. What a terrible tragedy. But God promised me after this terrible burning, there'd be an unusual canopy of God's presence over that island. People hungering for God being saved. Say it again. Visit me. Visit me. Now I'm going to pray. I stand here in King's Chapel where I've stood many times before. We've gone through COVID, huge war in Europe, economic downturn, a terrible natural disaster in our beloved state, a place where so many of our fellow Hawaii citizens had their honeymoon. Place of great memory. We say now, visit us. Visit us. I'm coming, says the Lord. Even now, I'm standing right next to you. Even now, I'm knocking at the door of your heart. Even now, I stand ready to sweep into your family, to sweep into your life and visit you and visit you and visit you and visit you. These words come to me. Visit me. Visit me, I pray. For I need your visitation. I need your visitation. There's no other way. 
I'm desperate for your presence. I'm in dire straits without you. Visit me, I pray, and fill me anew. Let your spirit fall in a day of darkness and pain. Visit us, I pray, that we might see your game. He's here to visit you right now. To visit you in your affliction. To visit you. I'm not a big singer, but I'm going to sing this little chorus. Visit me. Oh, visit me. For without your visitation, I will never be free. Lest you visit me. Lest you visit me. Let you visit me, and I will visit you. I will touch you through and through. I will settle on your island. I come to make you new. In my presence you will linger, no longer wanting to run away. For I will visit you. I will visit you. I will visit you. I will visit you.